This week we're back with episode 8 of the Andor series. Once again it's showing us the might of the Galactic Empire. As a Star Wars series, it shows the dark corners of the Imperial regime. Additionally, as the ISB cracked down on the growing rebellion, we're getting more scenes that I absolutely enjoy from this series. Greetings my young Padawans, my name is Captain Jack and welcome to Star Wars Now. Before we jump into the video, use the force and hit that subscribe and like button to never miss a video from myself and the team here at Star Wars Now. As always, if you're talking about Star Wars, particularly this episode, we want to hear about it. Episode 8 starts with the next episode arc for Andor. Episodes 9 and 10 will follow into this and likely ultimate in another big event for the series. This episode ends much like the first one. We're introduced to the newly established locations and some of the new characters. However, we don't know the direction it might be going in. Cassian Andor is inside this Imperial factory turned prison. Luke and is meeting with rebels like Saw Gerrera. All the pieces are falling into place. Meanwhile, the RSP is cracking down on Ferex and starting to unravel who is behind all these organised efforts around the galaxy. One of the most concerning elements is the identification of Luthan. If I were a betting man, and I somehow are, I'd expect that Cyril Khan will play a role in Luthan's downfall. Seeds were planted in this episode. We know Carl Solo is back for the second season of Andor. There is also a large time jump between season 1 and season 2. Therefore, it's possible we see Luthan not make it out of the first season. This would be a total shame. Stellan Skarsgård has been and continues to be fantastic in his role as Luthan Rail. However, we know the show isn't afraid to kill off characters. Much like Game of Thrones, it will make you love them, then quickly off them. Look at the Aldani rebel group. Nemec was a personal favourite of mine and he was killed by money. Quite poetic when you think about it, but still rather sad in the grand scheme of things. Finally, in this Andor episode, we see the floating Imperial complexes. These were first seen in the Andor trailers and we theorise that they were some Imperial secret weapons facilities. This time it appears they are just that and a mix of work factories as well as a prison. This whole factory is like something we've never seen before in Star Wars. That makes it even more interesting. Though, you know, it would like to get blown up of how the rebellion is currently going. As the episode continues, you'd think it'd become clearer what the Imperial factory has been building the whole time. It doesn't. One element that is immediately clear when Cassian arrives is that he's plotting an escape. You can see him observing Imperials, who seem lax of rules. Additionally, you can also see some members of the prison actually getting up to something. So that's the communicating via hand signals through the glass. Of course, we're saying the onset of last week's episode, mainly Yulon's public order resentencing order or directive. The prisoners here have all seen their sentences increase. They don't know that Cassian is particularly at fault for this. Of course, the raid on Aldani caused the ISB to crack down on the galaxy. However, you can bet this will come up in conversation sometime soon, especially when Andor plots his escape from a prison. You know an escape is coming, of course it is. The episode lays some of the foundations for said escape. Things like sloppy guards and also prisoners secretly communicating with each other. Two interesting characters appear during the Imperial prison scene. One is a warden, if we can call him that, or rather foreman. Actor Annie Circus plays him. A surprise cameo, but a welcome one. Circus previously played Snoke in the Star Wars Secret Trilogy, notably appearing in The Last Jedi mainly. The other character is called Melshi. Some might remember his character's name. He was featured in Rogue One, a Star Wars story, as Sergeant Melshi of the Scarab Strike Team. Melshi is likely to play a large role in what's coming up, and hopefully we'll see more of him before his eventual demise in Rogue One on Scarif. Hopefully. We are treated to more scenes with Imperial Security Brew. Honestly, these are some of my favourite scenes in the Andor series. They give us a perspective of the Empire we've rarely seen before, especially when it comes to Star Wars. We typically see the Imperials blasting something to bits or cocking it up in the process. Here we see them being very tactical about what they're doing and very efficient. Colonel Lauren appears once again with Malcolm Sinclair playing him and it's a fantastic portrayal might I add. I wasn't sure how much screen time he would get in the Star Wars series, simply because he's a recurring character in Star Wars and therefore not a new character for the series like Major Partizag. It does seem his reach is going through the galaxy however, as Dejavir is given authority to crack down on Ferex and push him to find Andor. Mero eventually finds a way to Ferex, where she immediately hunts down her transmission source and identifies Bix Kayleen. In a quick sequence, we see the duality of Dedra Miro. She pretends to be friendly towards Bix, likely to gain her trust or attempt to. But we also take a moment to commend how well written this series actually is. These character moments on Andor make it as a show for me. Hopefully Tony Gilroy will write more Star Wars soon, as this was fantastic. Also, the cameos in this episode were interesting. You sashes in Andor? I never expected that. I remember from an old TV show called Benadorm in the UK, so uh, yeah, a weird one. The scenes of Mon Mothma are always a delight. We're treated more of a growing political intrigue in Mon's life. 
Additionally, we've got her surrounded by more imperial ideals. However, I do suspect Perrin, her husband, is getting suspicious of what is happening, especially when her longtime friend arrives once again. It'll be interesting to see how far Andor pushes the relationship between the pair, given the show seems to not hold back in this department. We'll speak about this in just a minute. Overall, there wasn't too much in Mont in this episode apart from her usual rebel conversations at a fancy dinner party. However, I'm curious about her daughter. She's either aware of what's happening with Mon or something else. If you look at the episode, certain camera angles really focus on her daughter and what she's doing in the background. Something's happening here, I'm telling you. Given we know where Mon eventually ends up in Star Wars, there might be a hard reality coming to this family sometime soon. We know the Gorman Massacre is an event soon to occur. This will force Mothma to leave the Imperial Senate, but does she leave her family behind? The rebel effort on Ferex is growing, though in an interesting twist, Val and Sintra are now present on the planet. Sintra has somehow escaped Aldani, and Val is tasked with protecting Lumen's identity by terminating Cassian. Unfortunately, neither know where Cassian is. Additionally, we're seeing more of a pair's relationships. Star Wars relationship history isn't typically as complex as we see here. Finally, Saul Guerrero appears in the Andor series. I've got to commend Forrest Whitaker for his portrayal of the character. Originally starting in the Clone Wars, then Rogue One, and now Andor. We see Saw in his element, sitting with his partisans in the middle of nowhere. Typically, the character of Saw refuses Lufan's offer of work with others. Andor is showing us how he is a problem with the growing rebellion, or at least part of it. While Saw can do what it takes and does do what must be done, he fails to work with others. As Lufan points out, the petty differences between each person stops parts of the rebellion from working together right now. Many expected us to see more of Saw, and I think we will. The trailer shows another heated conversation between him and Lufan, so expect some fireworks eventually. Many have theorised that he may meet Cassian Andor at some point in the show. We'll have to wait and see about that and see if it actually happens. The episode does a lot of setup for the series. Given it's the start of the arc of episodes, it makes sense and is needed. But we're also establishing characters in new locations. We've got Sinta on Ferex and also Dedra Miro also there now. It won't be long before sparks fly on this planet. Marvel's connections to wanting to be a rebel may prove valuable with Sinta and what she plans to do. However, the complications of her hunting for Andor are something that's going to come to blows soon. And it'll be interesting to see where these characters butt heads. Meanwhile, Cyril Khan's storyline seems to be moving slower than everyone else's. Likely he will be central to the plot lines and later chapters of the story. However, we've still got to keep him up to date and moving along. We know Carl Solo is back for the second season, as we mentioned earlier, but it does seem that he is injected into the story for the sake of not forgetting his character sometimes. I'm sure this will make all the sense when we actually get to the better episodes that feature him, but we'll have to see. Overall, Andor is doing a fantastic job at expanding areas of the Star Wars universe. It's letting us see the nitty gritty details of the Rebellion. However, on the flip side, we see the efficiency of the Galactic Empire. Focusing on the Imperial Security Brew is a fantastic angle for the series. One I appreciate each time I watch the show. Once again, Andor has my attention firmly grasped and I'm looking forward to what is next for the series. Okay, so while Andor Episode 8 is out now, don't forget that the animated anthology series, Tales of the Jedi, is also now on Disney+. You can watch our review when it's here on the channel, but in the meantime, we'll see you next week with Andor Episode 9. Okay, Exalt Ones, that's myself on Star Wars Now. What did you think of the latest Andor episode? Get typing. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to keep up to date with the latest Star Wars news, lore, and more. You can also follow us on social media as well, but please let us know what you think in the video comment section below. Because if you're talking Star Wars, we want to hear about it. That's myself on Star Wars Now. I've been Captain Jack, and we'll see you next time. May the Force be with you.